So, at first glance, the message of today's gospel is remarkably simple. It can probably be distilled into a single sentence or two. I think C.S. Lewis perhaps said it best when he said, the Christian faith is either overwhelmingly first or not at all. In other words, there's no such thing as being halfway in. This is something that either there must be all in, mind, body, and soul, completely immersed and dedicated, or we can't really rightly claim that we're following at all. There's simply no middle ground between the two. Now, this of course gives us a very clear command. It says, Christians, be all in. Well, okay. But what does it mean to be all in? What does it mean to be the one who counted the cost and said, yep, I have enough to build that tower. Or, I have a strong enough delegation to go against that opposing king. Perhaps we wish he hadn't used such militaristic metaphors, but he did. What does it mean in our context and in our time and our place? It has gotten awfully murky over the last 1700 years. It's kind of easy to oversimplify, perhaps even romanticize, the first three centuries of Christianity because what it meant to be all in then what it meant to carry the cross and follow in Jesus' footsteps was perhaps a shade simpler. The Christian faith was spreading through the Greco-Roman world. It was spreading eastward and southward into lands such as Africa, South Asia. There's even evidence that it made it as far as the modern-day Himalayan and western Chinese regions of the world. And in all of those lands, it was undeniably the oddball marginal faith. It was not the central way of thinking and living and being in the lands that it occupied. And in some cases, it was violently opposed and persecuted. There's plenty of evidence of uh, certain Roman imperial eras in those first three centuries when that occurred historical records of such things. And so to simply claim the name of Christ and say, I belong to this way, Jesus Christ is Lord, that alone was probably in some ways sufficient to say, I'm all in. I'm carrying the cross, in some cases entirely, literally. But then things start to get complicated. You have a Roman emperor convert to Christianity, and then pretty soon you have entire lands claiming Christianity as the national faith, as the done thing, as the way you live if you are a person who claims this as your land. So all of a sudden, simply saying I'm a Christian is no longer analogous to saying I'm carrying the cross. And today's gospel makes it entirely clear that to be all in is indeed to carry the cross. So fast forward now to our time and place. What does it mean to carry the cross? 
Just turn to your sister and brother you've been loved all your life and all of a sudden say, I hate you. No, no, that's not what it's about. But it is a poignant reminder that even those most deeply held loving alliances that we have with other people and other creatures always have to fall a distant second to our one and only lasting alliance, which is an alliance to God. So let's look at those confusing alliances. We have this human tendency to sort of want to land in one place and say, okay, I have found the sweet spot. I found what it means to love and serve God with all my heart, and this is how I express it in the world. I express it by being a member of a certain church. I express it by having a certain uh, political sensibility. I express it by embracing a certain category of people, being really intentional about that, opening my doors to them. All well and good. But the message of the cross reminds us that's always temporary. And the sands are always shifting. Every single morning, we need to get up and look at the world around us with fresh eyes as if we had never thought these thoughts before and say, who around me is the underdog today? Who is the one who is being subject to character assassination, to oppression, to unjust poverty today? And the answers to those questions are never static. <coughs> Especially if you were a child of, say, the 60s, where everybody sort of aligned themselves along this polarized axis, and each side thought, I'm right, the other side is wrong, anybody who thinks differently from me, it must be a subject of either a flaw of intellect or a flaw of character. And then those lines shifted again in the 70s and 80s, and now they've shifted again in the 2000s and the 2010s. And we keep trying to realign ourselves as if somehow we can find a permanent foothold. But this message of the cross says, no. Your only permanent foothold is in a God who always stands with the one who's being slammed upon, the one who's being ostracized, the one who is being either character or literally assassinated. So, I invite you every morning to make your prayer. Who is that person? Who is that community? It is almost certainly not the same one it was yesterday. It is almost certainly not the same one it's going to be tomorrow. But who is the one who is being nailed to the cross today? And that's the one you're being asked to cast your lot with. And sometimes it might mean casting your lot against the very people and the very systems that you consider an ally yesterday. I think there's a really good pattern for this that has happened in our midst. And it has happened by necessity, but I notice I, it has transformed certainly my heart and I believe the heart of our church over the last two years. Those of you who are here regularly know that this space has become the host for other worshiping assemblies. We had St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church here for a while. Now we have the Lighthouse, the Center for Spiritual Living, and Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Sierra Malabar Catholic Church, right here in this sanctuary. Now each of these assemblies has some wonderful strengths and some unique challenges. And the thing that's so neat about it is that some of those strengths and challenges are diametrically opposed to one another. And we have been called to open our arms and embrace all of it. I can't think of anything that is a better object lesson in how to keep our sense of proper alliance 
to see an African-American church get a foothold here. Also, there were some major theological differences that we had to and still have to work out between our church and theirs. And then the lighthouse comes into our midst. They find themselves in the crosshairs of the community for almost exactly the opposite reasons that St. Matthew's often has. And then we have the Mother Teresa Church that speaks a language entirely not understood of most people in this community and that has its ethnic origins in a land that is overwhelmingly Hindu and Muslims have to work out how to be Christian in such a context. Each group has its unique strengths, its unique challenges, and to love 